Hello everyone. In the last video, we talked about two-tailed hypothesis testing. Remember, what we did really was compute a test statistic, which meant that we would find out a z-value and its corresponding probability, a p-value in red, and then we would check whether this p-value is less than the significance level of the test, whether it's less than alpha. And based on that, we would make a decision on if we can reject the null hypothesis or if we cannot reject the null hypothesis. But one thing is of interest here is that our test statistic is computing a z-value, which means to calculate probability, we have to look at the normal distribution. The thing with normal distribution is there are a certain number of underlying assumptions to use this normal distribution. For example, you should be aware of the population standard deviation. You should have a large number of samples. You should also have a random uh, sampling setup. However, if these conditions are not met, suppose you do not have a large number of samples, you do not have samples that are, say, greater than 30, then what that really means is you cannot calculate probability accurately. The normal distribution would not give accurate probabilities. For that reason, we head over to what's called a student's t distribution. The t distribution looks familiar to as, as compared to the normal distribution. It's pretty much similar. However, notice here in green, the t distribution is slightly different from the normal distribution in blue. The reason for that is it corrects or and accounts for the fact that the samples are less in number and since they are less in number the t distribution accounts for that offset and gives accurate probabilities the t distribution has t values on its axis as compared to the z values of the normal distribution an important thing that characterizes this t distribution is the degrees of freedom df Degrees of freedom are the logical independent values that a certain distribution can take. In our case, degrees of freedom is essentially n minus 1, one less than the total number of samples. Just as we had a z table to calculate probabilities, in the t distribution, we have a t table. And this is what a student's t distribution table looks like. The z distribution gives probabilities, however, the student's t distribution gives t values, the x-axis values. It does not give probabilities or the area under the curve, it gives the t values, the x-axis. And this then is calculated by specifying the significance level of the test, whether it's 0. 0, 0, 001, whether it's 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 05, 0, 0.1, 0, 0.2. Have to specify the alpha the significance level of the test and also whether it's a one tail or two tail test. Once this is locked in, we could look at what is the degrees of freedom in our case. Remember, degrees of freedom is just n minus 1. And then we could access the appropriate row based on the significance level chosen and we could obtain a t-value. Let's understand this better with an example. Let us head over to a question. Let's just say we are trying to check the claim the average age of Nobel Prize winners when they received the prize is not 60. So this is our claim and we set our claim as the alternative hypothesis. So alternative hypothesis is that average is not 60. The null hypothesis then is the opposite of it which is average age is 60. We have 30 samples and we have the mean age in the sample 62.1 and standard dev of 13.46. We set the significance level to 0.05, a 5% significance level for the test and we have our hypothesis set up like this. Now when we come across this question what we're really interested in is finding four values. We know that we can compute a test statistic we want to know what is the t-value and the probability associated with it. And we also want to know the probability and t-value of the significance level that we have set up. Remember, the decision rule remains the same. 
we have to compute the probability of the test statistic and see whether it's less than significance level to reject the null hypothesis successfully. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and do it. So we compute the test statistic in the same manner as we did for the z, uh, for the z, for the case where we had uh, the z value. Here we are finding t value. We're using the same test statistic, x bar minus mu over sigma over under root n. Turns out to be 0 0.855. So we have the t value from the test statistic at 0 0.855. But what we are looking for is the associated probability with it. So what is the probability when t is 0 0.855? So when the t is 0 0.855, obviously 0 0.855 is greater than 0. We draw these lines, and then we um, mark our tail areas. And this turns out to be 0 0.2. Why is it 0 0.2? And 0 0.2 is on either side. So what that really means is the p-value is actually going to be 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So this is going to be our probability here. But how did we get, how did we come across uh, this specific probability? How did we find out probability of 0 0.2 as a tail probability, the right hand side and then the left hand side corresponding to 0 0.855 t value? Well, we have formulas that help us. So we could head over to Excel and go ahead and insert the t value 0 0.855 to a bunch of these formulas. So let's start with the first and the most relevant one in our case. So we know it's a two-tailed test, which is why we have t dot this dot two t to specify two tails. We plug in the t value and the degrees of freedom. It's twenty-nine because the number of samples was thirty. Remember, the number of samples is thirty. The degrees of freedom is thirty minus one twenty-nine, and this gives us a probability of zero point four. Notice this: we are we are converting t values into probabilities. So we're converting t value 0 0.855 into 0 0.4 probability. And this is what we have, 0 0.4 probability. It is the total probability. It is a two-tailed probability, right? Associated with this test statistic, it adds up all both of these uh, tail probabilities, and we get 0 0.4. But there are other formulas, too. So if you were doing a one-tail test, so that then we could use a t this dot rt, the right tail uh, probability, probability to the right side of the t value. We plug in the t-value, degrees of freedom, and gives us 0 0.2. Notice the probability to the right side, the right tail of this t-value is in fact 0 0.2. So this also checks out to be uh, absolutely correct. Another formula that we have is a t dot dist formula. So this again gives us probability, but it gives us probability to the left of this t-value. So if you look at this, to the left of this t-value, it says the probability is 0 0.8. And this actually makes sense because if the probability to the right is 0 0.2, probability to the left of this in entirety is 0 0.8 because it has to total to 1. So this also makes uh, sense. So what we have got here is we've got three formulas that we could use. Uh, the most important one in a two-tails test for us is t this dot 2t. We plug in t value, get the corresponding t value for this. And since we have this, our next step would be to find out T values and the probability of significance level. Notice significance level is alpha, and alpha is already a probability. So we could simply just go ahead and plug in 0 0.05, uh, and that is the probability associated with this significance level. But what is the t value for this? So if we if we look at our chart, we know 0 0.05 is the significance level. It gets distributed to both the tails. It's a two-tail test. So 0 0.05 gets divided by two which makes this green as half of it, 0 0.025 and 0 0.025 here. But what is the t-value associated with this? Turns out it is 2.045. How is this 2.045? For that, we look at another uh, bunch of formulas, the inverse formulas. So for us, it's a two-tail test. So we look at t dot inverse two-tail, and we plug in the significance level, 0 0.05 probability, and it gives us a t-value, which is 2.045. So that is how we obtain the 2.045 value for a two-tail test. Now, if you did not want to use the 2t test, if you just, or if you were doing a one-tail test and you were using t dot inverse formula, the first one here, then what you really need to do is plug in the value of this tail and, this, this, and, and think through this as a single tail. So the, this area is then 0 0.025, and if you plug that in, you will arrive at the same correct t value of 2.045.
It doesn't matter if it's negative or positive, it's, it's the same because this is also symmetric. So then you have 2.045 as the as the t value, which is something we could write here, 2.045. Okay, so we've got all of these uh, four values uh, for us, and this helps us uh, basically create uh, this helps us create this this diagram where we could specify probabilities, we could specify t values corresponding to our t our test statistic corresponding to our significance level. And once we have that, we are now ready to make a decision on whether or not we would reject the null hypothesis. Remember, the decision rule remains the same. The p-value has to be less than alpha, and our p-value is 0 0.4. It's the sum of both of these, uh, these, these areas, these probabilities on both tails. Alpha is 5%, sum of probabilities of both the tails here for a significance level and 0.4 is in fact greater than 0.05 so this condition is does not meet and what that means is we cannot reject the null hypothesis we fail to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than alpha so we cannot reject the null hypothesis